is now my honor to introduce you to three Baltimore treasures who will share their experience with you about Baltimore and their love of Baltimore. The first is Hilton Carter. Hilton Carter is a polymath. He's an absolute polymath. He uh, is a artist, he is a hobbyist, and his hobby is houseplants. Uh, it's all turned him into an instant celebrity on internet and also a best-selling author. And with that, I'd like you to welcome to the stage Hilton Carter. Hello. Uh, welcome to Baltimore. If you're not from Baltimore, uh, if you are from Baltimore, uh, go Ravens. Uh, as Kirby was saying, I am from Baltimore, born and raised. There's a lot of people out here. And uh, I grew up in the city here, not too far away. I was born at Johns Hopkins. And my life here, when I first um, started to figure out how to do things and to move around in the space, um, I realized that there were some things that I would need to adjust in the climate that I lived in. So today I'm going to talk, in the time that I have, I'm going to talk about how greenery and bringing greenery into my home has not just changed me uh, personally, uh, but also professionally. So back in the 80s, when I grew up in Baltimore, uh, when I was here, I lived in row homes, uh, like most of those who lived in the city. And in the 80s, it was a pretty uh, rough time in Baltimore. And by the time my mother could realize what was happening to me, she decided it was probably a good time to move me out of the city and uh, push me into the county of Baltimore. And that was the first time I think I found myself planting grass and having environments like woods and things to play with my friends. There was an effect that that had on me, but I really wasn't exactly sure what was happening at the time, but I carried that with me. I ended up going, traveling into the city again when it came to college. I went to Maryland Institute College of Art, which uh, really molded me as an artist and also a man. When I graduated from Maryland Institute, Maryland Institute I realized that I also wanted to be a filmmaker. And to do so, I needed a degree in film. So I left Maryland, went out to California, like most people with the dream to become filmmakers. And I got my master's in film out in LA. But the one thing that I realized while I was there is that some places have great weather. <laughs> and I needed to find uh, my perfect space, a place where I could live that had wonderful weather, a beach, plants. And it was there that I realized the power of greenery. Fast forward to 2011, I was now working as a freelance director and doing commercials for small agencies and clients. And I was working for an, uh, a retirement community that had a chain of uh, facilities all across America. And they flew me from LA to Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. I've never been to Glen Mills, Pennsylvania. And there is where I was put onto the place called Terrain. There's Terrain. Um, it is a nursery that has an amazing cafe greenhouse inside. And a kid from Baltimore, I had never eaten inside such a wonderful space, full of greenery, very lush, very vibrant. And in that space, I realized, why am I not bringing plants into my home and creating a space like this for myself? I left there knowing that when I had a home that had enough light, had the right environment, I would start bringing in plants. So in 2014, I left LA, moved to New Orleans, another tropical, really nice weather environment, except for in the summer. If you've never been to New Orleans, never go in the summer. Um, <laughs> And in 2015, I got a job offer to move back to Baltimore. And in that, I knew I needed to be back in the city of Baltimore because I love my city. And I wanted to bring that idea of bringing greenery, that lush experience, to my home. 
I found myself living in an area of Baltimore called Hamden, along the Jones Falls River, uh, where it's basically just trees and the sound of a wonderful river outside of my home. So in that, I started bringing in plants into my space, and I started getting real uh, weird, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I told my girlfriend at the time that I wanted to put a plant over our bed. She said, are you nuts? I said, possibly so, but I know that the idea of bringing in greenery can change the way we feel in this home. So slowly, I left New Orleans with 60 plants. I know you think that might sound wild, but then uh, now today I have over 300 plants that I care for. So in my space, the whole idea is to live in a space that is full of energy that makes me feel creative, makes me feel at peace. And then when it comes to taking care of all of these plants, the idea of watering them, talking to them, moving through the space is my time to meditate. I realized that it was important to surround myself, my wife, my girlfriend became my wife, by the way, um, <laughs> and my pets. Uh, with an environment that was full of life, that made us feel perfect. And that kind of got me on the idea of biophilic design in cities where they are basically taking urban spaces and bringing in as much greenery as possible. Copenhagen, this treehouse uh, walkway is something that I feel like should be in every city. This gardens by, gardens by the Bay in Singapore, environments in city, urban environments where, you, where people, young folks, can go and find themselves to, a little bit of a moment to be more creative. Hotels, everyone's starting to understand the idea and the power of greenery. There are hospitals where they now know, studies now know, that the power of greenery or just nature itself can help with the... Uh, I guess, powers of curing whatever types of diseases or just making people feel a bit better. So in 2016, three years ago, probably from today, I decided that I would start bringing greenery in my home, but also not greenery in my home, started to focus on having greenery as a part of my professional life. So I became a plant stylist, and I thought I would start by maybe using the images that I created and sharing them via social media, and that was Instagram for me. Uh, at Hilton Carter if you're trying to follow. Um, and I started <laughs> posting images and it would be shared and the city has this wonderful, uh, I would say billboard there where they shared it, Baltimore Magazine would share it, Baltimore Style Magazine shared my space and on and on people would start to feel that need to share the things that I was sharing. I would sell products like these cradles I call them. They hold cuttings, propagation, little babies, that's why they're called cradles, and I grow these plants in my space. The Washington Post would then uh, reach out and do a feature on me, um, not just on their site, but also in a full-page spread. Um, man, this time is rolling. Uh, so um, things started to pick up. You know how inst the, inter the internet is, like one thing after another. Um, in Style Magazine, again, Baltimore Magazine, the Republic, BuzzFeed, et cetera, et cetera. HGTV reached out and wanted me to be on their social media and also on their website. Here's a video. Hi, I'm Hilton Carter, and this is my home and studio tour. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and while my home has over 180 plants, my studio has about 100. Yeah, I know, I get it. That's a lot of plants. But have you ever tried to have only one slice of avocado toast? Exactly. I could say my love for greenery started when I was a kid and always wanting to live in a treehouse. But in actuality, it started while living in New Orleans a few years back and needing to fill a space in my apartment. That space will soon be filled by a fiddle fig whom I still have four years later. I call him Frank. For me, the goal is always to blur the line between interior and exterior. Plants have so many health attributes but my initial vision for them were strictly cosmetic. Plants really do help a place feel more warm and inviting. Imagine glamping but never leaving the house. Now that's the goal. But for me, it isn't just about bringing in any type of plant into a space. They have to fit the vibe. You have to get the foliage textures right. Layer a fiddle behind a bird of paradise with a Chinese fan palm to the side. 
Now that's a look. Now all you need to do is find a vintage chaise and slide it in the middle. Your napping nook is ready to go. Having this sort of jungle vibe in your home is great, but believe me, it takes dedication. I spend about four to five hours each week watering and caring for all of the plants. And sometimes it feels like not all of them want to be alive. If I could leave you with one tip, it would be to know the type of plant person you are before you go all the way in. It takes time, patience, and dedication. Imagine them all as your new green potted pets just without the messy cleanup. Thanks. Thank you. And then Wall Street Journal uh, reached out to do basically another video. Um, I'll kind of get through this quickly. I would describe my feelings and attitudes towards the plants that I have as a kinship. I call my plants my plant buds. Sometimes I even consider them as like green pets. It's very uh, fulfilling when you can see a plant go from being just a small little pup, let's say, into a full-grown adult-sized plant. And that to me is what I think you would consider plant parenting, right? Right now, we currently have 180 or so plants in our home, and I care for about another 100 in my studio space. So, close to 300 in total. This is Frank, Monty, Rubber McGee, Joey, King, Jessica Rabbit, Martin, Mickey, Old Friend, Medusa, Francis, these are the two Bobs, Clavel, Grandpa, Young Money. The first 15 plants they got named were the first 15 plants they actually owned. The difference between an obsession and a passion when it comes to having plants is being self-aware enough to know that I can only care for 300 plants versus an obsession where you're just like, more, more, more. I'm not the crazy plant person, am I? Like, I don't want to be that particular person. All right, all right. Um, I might be a crazy plant person, but... Uh, that craziness led uh, to me being featured on plant books and in plant books, uh, four of them actually, and then to a publisher reaching out for me to create my own plant book, which is out today called Wild at Home. You can find it wherever books are sold. Um, and that passion for me, this, this thing, this thing that was just a, I would call it a hobby, but it really isn't a hobby. It's just a want to fill my home with what I thought would make me feel so much better and make my space uh, come alive, like I said before, um, has turned into what now is my day job. And I traveled over 25 cities across the world promoting this book. I was just recently on the Rachel Ray Show. If you haven't seen it, I made a real fool of myself. Um, <laughs> And April 2020, I'll have a new book come out called Wild Interiors, uh, which will feature 13 homes from across the world that are very, very, very plant-filled and lush and beautiful. So that's it. Welcome to Baltimore.